flats here are chain driven. I don't know if you can see that they're moving. They just slowly go along there and then they go up inside and it just slowly comes up. I'm going to climb up the side of this driver's with me go up. Oh. time here but this goes on all year long bringing them in from the spud sheds the spud sellers so if you haven't done this or seen it years ago I did this with a conveyor belt with little pieces of wood on top of it because if the whole load was on a conveyor belt the belt would just spin but the new modern ones are chain driven so that's the end of his load into that big hopper thing there so hold on a second to try and climb over here yeah, so that's me back on the ground. Those of you who have watched the channel for a while know that we load here quite a bit. It's a nice evening. It's cold in the mornings and cold in the night, but it warms up quite well during the day. So, I'm out here in the little, Brett's little red Volvo. Giving us a bit of grief at the minute. We thought it needed injectors. It's difficult to start sometimes, and Jeff kind of come up with a thought that, that maybe the the wastegate in the turbo is sticking, and it's pressurising the fuel system and causing the injectors not to have a lot of pressure when they spray into the cylinder. You know, so because the wouldn't go yesterday and he took the actuator off the turbo and it fired right up instantly and it's been going well ever since but we'll see how that plays out anyway it's to get a DOT inspection and it needs a hug really who better to hug it than old Jeff the green one uh, this isn't it here the our green one is in the shop it's had a truck waiting for a transmission we got it yesterday it's got a new clutch going into it today. We had to wait for the flywheel coming, it had been done last night. But that's what's happening with those two. The green one should be on the road, so I'm just loading this trailer for Wes tonight so that he's, he's flying up tomorrow to jump into the green one with a new transmission in it and head down to Florida with this trailer. And then we'll concentrate on this one. My yellow truck. It's still over in Elko, but we're, we're, we're doing something, jiggling things around quite a bit here so that we can get out there and grab it. Uh, we're still waiting for the insurance company to pay out on the fire damage load over in Omaha with the blue truck so that we can get that one back here. Uh, can't get it back until, you can't get it out of the recovery yard until the insurance company pays for it. So. They're just being slow and typical insurance company, really. So, but that's what's happening. Hopefully we get this thing fixed, because this has been a really good truck. If I could swap everything for Volvos, I'd be doing that. I kid you not, the pack car, Peterbilt, came with, keep Peter, you know, that whole pack car, Kenworth. Peterbilt combination with the pack car in it sucks. I've had four or five of them now and they've all been trouble. Um, I think this is the way to go. If I could swap everything for these, I would. It's a good little truck, this, and it's the oldest one I've got. So, yep, there's the trailer shaking a little bit. That's my first one going in. I'll just check my daughter in the cab here and I'll uh, go in and start throwing pallets on the floor. So I want to finish this video off, the green truck did get the transmission fitted into it, uh, so it's got, it's a brand new one and all, none of your reconditioned or used crap eh, that was painful, so that's done on the road, it's in Florida right now, so we'll recoup that back pretty quick, um, the red Volvo's in the shop getting injectors fitted to it, 
Uh, Justin, she's running with a little T800 Kenworth that's on its way back from Texas to some pipe going to Utah. Two chunks of pipe is all big massive sewage pipe on a step deck, so it'll be back. It'll let me back. Yeah, tomorrow morning he unloads. He's going to be up here. We're trying to get my load out to Iowa or Omaha, somewhere out there, so that we can get that blue truck picked up. That's all been cleared by the insurance and ready to be collected. So uh, we'll get that lifted up on the step deck. Same way as we brought back, in fact, same way as the blue truck brought the yellow truck back. No, the yellow, oh, I can't remember. We did that before. You just lift the front up and reverse the truck under and then put the front on it and then lift the back up and then back it under it and set the back down. So we'll just then collect that. Uh, as soon as it gets out there, it bounces back. And just depending on when the time is, I might just bounce it down to Elko, Nevada. I wouldn't mind going down there with him actually um, to pick up the yellow one and bring it home. So uh, and get those two back in the road. The, the blue one's burnt significantly, so uh, the back half of the cab, they might need a new sleeper on it. I need to cut the frame and put the back half of the frame back on there. Or, 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 I just scrap it and put the cat in the yellow truck. Or, I've got a chance to buy a Peterbilt 379 that's pre-logbook truck. Um, for cheap, cheap money because it doesn't have a engine or a transmission in it so I could just lift the Kenworth one out and stick it into that so maybe, 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 we'll see um, but that's what's going on with the trucks uh, what else have we got? Uh, Wes's trucks uh, uh, Wes never went to Florida he ended up spending some time with him up here made some plans big oil fuel attack coming up from us too um, won't get stuff down there and take advantage of what's happening down there. I don't know what's happening, but something's got to happen soon, eh? It's $80 a barrel of oil now. That's the highest it's been in the last seven years. So hopefully that has got a knock-on effect to the oil exploration down there. Um, of course, it all depends on supply and demand, as always. If there's a lot of trucks down there and not a lot of work, it sucks, but if there's not a lot of trucks and a lot of work, hey, we're at the races. So that's that's what we're going to do. We're going to get down there. We, he's going to take the green truck down there and the little white one's down there as well. And uh, we're going to have, uh, his dad's going to be down there running that white truck with us. So, aye, can't be bad. Can't be bad. Then we're just going to try and add some little trucks down there. Maybe when the yellow one's on the road, or the blue one as well, might put them down there. So, all depends. It, it's kind of why I'm doing that. Some of that is try to find a decent priced reefer trailer. It's difficult. Um, my Scottish Scrooge alarm goes off when I look at paying twenty thousand dollars more for something that you could have bought last year for that kind of, you know twenty grand less. So. It's a bit peculiar, but it's uh, the leaves are turning in the trees. I don't know if you can see behind me, they're starting to go that kind of gold color. And I know what happens after that. The white stuff falls out the sky and then you end up <sighs> with a headache that comes with all that. But no, drivers are doing well. Good guys working for me. Oh, Houston, let's not forget Houston. Houston's in the purple one. Where's he now? Um, he loaded through, he'd come through here and loaded up going down to Alabama. So he unloads on Friday <clears throat> and we'll get him bouncing straight back up here. So we'll get some pretty steady hauls that we're doing right now and it's working out really well. It's always better when you've got steady stuff going out and some steady stuff going back. So that aspect of it is pretty decent. We're getting the, you know, the trucks back on the road, the ones that are off it. Um, the, the guys out there at Arrow Towing in Omaha were very kind to me with the tow bill um, because they took the, the, so the insurance paid out on the truck and the, the trailer and the load and all that separately, you know, but 
Um, they only paid for the storage for a certain amount of time, even though it took them, I couldn't move the stuff out of the uh, towing yard because they hadn't paid for the load yet, um, dis disposing of the load. It was only three and a half grand, but um, that had to be taken care of before I could move it. Well, the storage bill ran up to over $6,000. And so I I've only get insurance, well, sorry, the insurance only paid it for a certain amount of time and I went back to them and they said, no, 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 that's not how it works. We pay it for a certain amount of time and you have to pay the rest, even though it's our fault that you've, you can't lift the stuff. So, it's, uh, the insurance companies are a lot less friendly than the Mafia, probably. Uh, no, it doesn't seem to be any reasoning with them or any anything like that. But, so, we've got that taken care of and I've only got to pay them a couple of thousand dollars to get that picked up. So, when Justin's out there picking it up, he'll pay the bill and that'll be that. Pick the blue truck up, bring it back and decide what to do with it. It's got that big kitty cat engine in it, a 13 speed behind it and the front half of it's great. It's might, I don't know, we'll see. I might be able to scrap some bits off of it and uh, take the engine and transmission, maybe put it in a yellow one, maybe put it in something else. Don't know. It's, but when that thing's put back together, I don't know what it'd be worth. You know, I'd, like, I'd rather put a studio sleeper on it and then paint it a better colour. But if that was all put back together, and I don't know how much that would be worth for a good paint job on it, you know. So, but there's there's it wasn't it wasn't totaled off either in the fire. Um, so they just sent a check for the repair, and that's it. So, okay, so that's us. We'll uh, get this fired up onto the onto the net and take it from there. Speak to you soon.